Hello, and welcome to the Daily Bible Podcast with Trisha and Michelle. We're just two friends reading through the Bible chronologically and encouraging you to do the same. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook, Daily Bible Podcast, or go to our website, dailybiblepodcast.net. We are going through the one-year chronological Bible, and we have links for that in our show notes and also at our website. Also, Go over to Facebook and look for our community group. Just look for Daily Bible Podcasts. We would love to have you there where we interact, where we share what we're reading, where we share what God is sharing with each of us. It's so fun, Michelle, to get on there and they'll say, oh, I loved how you said this and I love how you said that. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that was three months ago. And (laughs) for us, it was three months ago. For them, Uh they're just getting on those passages. And it's so Uh encouraging to know that something we said three months ago is impacting someone today. Mm -hmm. Also, something you could do that is encouraging to us is to go on your podcast platform, wherever you listen to Daily Bible Podcast, and rate us. If you think that Daily Bible Podcast is actually doing God's work in your life, give us four or five stars and give us a, just drop a comment because it helps share the word. Oh, and sharing the word, just hit share and send a, send a text to a friend of yours and say, I ah, listen to this podcast. They are helping me walk through the word. So go do that today. Okay. So today we are reading Jeremiah 32, Jeremiah 33, and Ezekiel 26 verses 1 through 14. Okay. So Jeremiah is in prison and remember he is sort of favored by the king, sort of not. I mean, he gets to be imprisoned in the courtyard of the guard in the royal palace, but he's still imprisoned. But I still, I bet it's a nicer prison. I mean, if you have to be in prison, it's probably like it's probably a nicer prison, prison. (laughs) right? And if you remember from last week, he gets fed. I mean, he gets fed even though there's a famine going on. Mm -hmm. He gets fed, and so then I was like, well, so he's still kind of favored, but he's still in prison. So there's something going on there, but. That's that's the king. That's Zedekiah. Well, mm-hmm. God is telling Jeremiah the same story. The city is going to be handed over to the Babylonians. And he says, don't fight it. Surrender. And God also gave him another message. He said, your cousin, Hanamel, Hanamel, it's not that enamel, good to me. But, it, but it rhymes with enamel. Hanamel. Hanamel. So anyway, animal, I don't know, Han- Hanamel. But then that rhymes with animal. So (laughs) anyway, so Jeremiah's cousin is going to come to him and say, buy my field and you have the right to it. And Jeremiah has every right to it because remember this, and this is being pulled from a scholar quoted at EnduringWord.com. Remember the law of Moses in Leviticus 25, the promised land was a sacred inheritance and property was not to leave the family. So Jeremiah's cousin coming to him saying, hey, you want to buy this land? So property is not to leave the family. God did not want his people to go outside their bloodline to get help. If they fell into debt, one of their own kin was supposed to redeem their property. So we don't know. We There wasn't any word in the text here in Jeremiah that his cousin fell into debt, but we do know that his cousin's coming to him and saying, Hey, do you want my property? Which Jeremiah's in prison. I know that's not a lot of things. Okay, first of all, Jeremiah's in prison, but and he's like prophesying. So maybe his cousin's like, "Hey, it's gonna all be destroyed anyway. Might as well get some money for it now." There could be that. There <laughs> really could be that. So Jeremiah buys the land because God says to do so. And even though it's going to be 70 years before he can take part of this land, like that's a long time because we know that. 70 years, he's going to be an old man. And he had to probably think through that too, 70 years. So, you know, he's in prison. Israel is slowly being exiled to Babylon. And the Lord of heaven's armies says, someday people will again own property Mm. here in this land and will buy and sell houses and vineyards and fields. So Jeremiah gave the papers to Baruch, his scribe, and turns to God and praises him for his mighty deeds and his miraculous ways, because that's who Jeremiah Mm -hmm. is. He loves the Lord, his God. And then he says, and yet, O sovereign Lord, 
You've told me to buy the field, paying good money for it before these witnesses, even though the city will soon be handed over to the Babylonians. It's got to be hard to believe God every step of the way. But God can handle our questions and our doubts, even when they come from someone such as Jeremiah. And I think that that is just, Mm -hmm. that's something that we're seeing um, in all of these greats in the Bible is that they are so great and they believe in God. And it's not that they're not Mm -hmm. believing God to fulfill his promises, but they still have little, I don't even want to call them cracks in the armor, but there's times when they're like, God, this is a lot. Like, this is a lot. You're saying I'm going to actually be able to to till this land. This is a lot. Well, once again, the Lord tells Jeremiah that he will destroy Jerusalem. So back in that cycle, Mm -hmm. Babylon will capture it. And the Israelites have done nothing but anger him. And so he is determined to get rid of the city. And he says, I taught them and they did not receive Mm -hmm. instruction or obey. Their sin is too great to be dealt with. Their sin is too great to be dealt with. And yet we we heard for we've heard for years. Well, okay, so we're only talking weeks or months, but Israelites heard for years that if you turn from your wicked ways, I will take you back. And now God is saying, ah, your sin is too great. It must be dealt with. Mm. And our great God, He always gives, He always gives a but. And he says, but I will certainly bring back my people again from all the countries. So even though he says their sin is too great, he says, but I will bring back my people again from all the countries where I scattered them. I will bring them back and I will let them live in peace. Mm -hmm. He promises to replant them. And God goes on to say, just as I have brought all these calamities on them, so I will do all the good I have promised. Someday I will restore prosperity to them. And God promised judgment, but he also promised good. He says the day will come when I will do for Israel and Judah all the good things that I have promised them. And in those days, and at that time, I'll raise up a righteous descendant Mm -hmm. from King David's line. He will do what is just and right throughout the land. And he, they, they will call him, the Lord is our righteousness. And he ends this particular message to Jeremiah with these words, I would no more reject my people than I would change my laws that govern night and day, earth and sky. I will never abandon the descendants of Jacob or David, my servant, or change the plan that David's descendants will rule the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Instead, I will restore them to their land and have mercy on them. And so in these two chapters, we are seeing Jeremiah telling God who he is and God telling Jeremiah mm-hmm. who he is. And it's it's <sighs> quite it's quite cool. And I just love that these messages of hope are in there. Cuz yeah. it can be like it's so funny cuz I'm like reading I'm like destruction, pain. And I'm like, "Oh, there's some good verses. Highlight, 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 highlight." <laughs> <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Okay, so Ezekiel 26, 1 through 14 is a prophecy against the city of Tyre. And this message begins with the Lord speaking to Ezekiel about Tyre's gloating over the fall of Jerusalem. We just had this earlier. Well, yesterday was a little bit of this too, but Tyre was pleased because Jerusalem's downfall would mean increased trade for the city. Mm-hmm. However, God declares judgment against Tyre for this attitude and just describes the destruction that it will come up that will come upon it that will come upon Tyre. So the prophecy vividly portrays the attack on Tyre by numerous nations led by the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar. The walls will be broken down, the towers destroyed, the streets filled with rubble. Tyre's wealth and influence and splendor will be utterly demolished. The city wall will become a bare rock, it says, a place for spreading nets, and its destruction will serve as a sign of God's sovereignty and judgment. This chapter illustrates the severe consequences of pride and rejoicing in the misfortune of others. And I don't know, it kind of reminds me of my kids. When one of the kids gets in trouble, the other one's like, hey, hey, hey. And then you're like, okay, you're in trouble too now. Uh, You go to your room too for mocking your your brother or sister when they're in trouble. So it doesn't go well for them. It doesn't go well for them. And it didn't go well for Tyre at Mm -hmm. all. 
or mm-hmm. any of the other nations. I mean, yeah. when when God, just as we're studying this, the other nations, they weren't happy Mm-mm. at all that Israel was who they were when King Solomon was was um, who he was. You know, there there is something about the human condition. We don't like it when someone has upped us in any way. Yeah. And 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 that goes along with nations and royalty and leaders. It, it goes from all the way down to the bottom, all the way up to the top. And there is just something about that, that we look around us and yeah, um, it's not going to go well for Tyre. No. Okay. Well, we need to take a break and um, hear from our sponsor. And then when we come back, we'll have the word of the day. Stay tuned. Okay, so the word of the day is replant. Mm. And so replant is to, sorry, there's a gnat flying around my head right now. Um, (laughs) Replant is to plant again. So you've got a tree or you have a plant and you dig it up and you plant it again. And so this is especially when transferring it to a larger pot or a new site. And, um, And so we saw that today, God is talking about replanting, but think about, think about a plant. Have you ever dug up a plant or moved it and moved it to a new site? Well, you you know what? I, I get the little plants already growing at um, Lowe's and then plant them in my garden. So I'm the (laughs) cheater. Like I don't start from the seeds. I'm like, oh, this already looks like it has strawberries on it. Let me plant this in my little garden boxes. And then I'm like, look, I grew strawberries, which I really didn't grow strawberries. (laughs) I just replanted those little um, vegetables or fruit inside my planter boxes. (laughs) Well, when I first, when I first moved up um, North from being down in Arkansas, someone said, come over to my house and half all of my plants. And so she had, She had some hostas and she had some irises and she had some others. And so I halved the hostas and it was so fun to see them grow. But she was very specific in how Mm -hmm. I had to replant them. And, And she says, when you replant them, you have to make sure that they get lots of water, but you also have to make sure there's no air pockets in um, as you're, as you're mm. watering them. So water them and then slowly put more dirt on them. And then what, so as you dug, you dig the hole, you put the plant in the hole and you water them, then you put some dirt on them, then you water them again. And then you, so you're slowly filling up the hole with water and dirt. So this is Michelle's gardening tip of the day. Yeah. I don't, I mean, it worked <laughs> beautifully for me. Um, I don't know if I'm actually explaining how it's supposed to go. But it sounds, anyways, it sounds there, really good. It was work. It was work. It was work. <laughs> but I've also watched trees being replanted. I remember when my um, when I was little and my dad brought in this maple to put in our front yard and he dug this big hole and he put this maple in. He did not cover it up with dirt right away. He let it sit, sit in water. He oh. put tons of water in, let it sit in the water and, and then slowly did add dirt later on. And anyway, all that to say is that as I've been thinking about, about what God is doing to Israel, there's planting which we talked about last week. We talked about what planting was, and that was our word of the day. But there's also the replanting, as he talked about with Jeremiah today. Mm -hmm. And he says, I am going to find joy in doing good for them and will faithfully and wholeheartedly replant them in this land. That's found in Jeremiah 32, 41. And I can't help but think that there might be Mm. maybe more intention with replanting, just because of my experience with replanting, it seems like there's more water, there's more nutrients, there's more sun um, that's needed. And, and you know, the exiles that God is talking about, that remnant is going to come back broken Mm -hmm. and battered. And as we've read, as we've read, God's saying, they're going to come back praising me. So we know that they're going to come back excited. They're going to come back brokenhearted over their sin and they're going to be close to him. They're going to be really close to him. But these are people who have gone through 
a very hard and harsh 70 years. And God knows that. And I can't help but think that they're going to be having walking through a little bit of trauma, a lot of sadness, and there's going to have to be, there's going to be some more intention on God's part in replanting them in the land because they're going to need, I don't want to say more care. They're going to need care, Mm -hmm. but it just feels like when Jeremiah is talking about how they're going to be, well, how God is going to be replanting, there's a different kind of replant going on, not to negate what we talked about last week with planting, but I think with some, there's going to have to be some replanting. Yeah. And I think, I mean, you think about how long 70 years is because I'm sitting here, my grandma's almost 94. I'm picturing her as a young mom. She had two little toddlers at home. You know, it's just like, that's a long time. So even her to go like, think of after 70 years and then all those other people are born into captivity. Um, They don't know what it's like to live in their own land. Talk about replanting lots of water, lots of everything just to, just to have them planted again. Yeah. Yeah. So true. All right. So So as we continue reading about Jeremiah, I keep thinking, poor Jeremiah. I mean, (laughs) there's so much loss and pain and coming destruction. Yet when God gives Jeremiah the message that his people will one day again own property. So this ties right into the, the replant, the buy and the sell. Jeremiah lifts his voice in praise. You have shown love, unfailing love to thousands, but you also bring the consequences of one generation's sin upon the next. You are great and powerful God, the Lord of heaven's army. So, you know, we're like this poor guy has to like go through all this and he's still praising God in the middle of all of this. Um, and then he says, Oh, sovereign Lord, you made heavens and earth by your strong hand and powerful arm. Nothing is too hard. So again, we that arm mm-hmm. thing comes back in, but he says, then the Lord says, behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me? So obviously replanting will not be too hard for God. <laughs> so he's yeah. like, I could, you're going to be back in that land. I'm going to replant you. It's going to be 70 years, but is anything too hard for God? No, mm-hmm. he could even replant after that many years, which is a generation basically. So we can rejoice in the replanting because we know the pain of being dug up. Jeremiah, he's looking forward to like, we will be replanted, but he is in the middle of the digging up the hard situations. And it seems like those people who have the strongest faith, the people we know that maybe are older, they have sometimes gone through the hardest situations in life. So it's like that replanting has given them those deeper roots in God. Replanting teaches us that even in the hardest times, we can find the strength and we can flourish. Um, And I love this. It says, I will, and this is God speaking, I will certainly bring my people back again from all the countries where I have scattered them in my fury. I will bring them back to this very city and let them live in peace and safety and they shall be my people and I will be their God. And I will give them one heart and one purpose to worship me forever for their own good and for the good of all their descendants. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them. I will never stop doing good for them. I will put the desire in their hearts to worship me and they will never leave me. And that's Jeremiah 32, 37 through 40. And that's all God has ever wanted. <laughs> like, I think the one, I, I keep saying this, but the one takeaway from reading through this whole Bible chronologically, all he ever wants is for us to be his people and he to be our God. Like every story, every situation, every, um, you know, every word of judgment every word of blessing it's all Mm. like and you will be my people and i will be your god like if we could just go back and highlight all these areas i think that's like the overall thing and that's what he's saying again like you will be replanted and then and then you will be my people and i will be your god and that's all he's ever wanted i think we've seen that so clearly as we're reading through the bible chronologically well, Charles Virgin once said, I mean, to to sort of sum up exactly what you're talking about and what our passage is talking about, he says, see how God puts his whole heart to the work when he is blessing his people. Mm-hmm. When he forgives sin, it is with his whole heart and soul. 
may we, with our whole heart and soul, repent of our sin, and then with our heart and soul, serve (sighs) the Lord. That is so good. That is so good. We just, we need that kind of whole heart to go back. And that comes after we're replanted. Often when we've gone through really hard stuff and we're replanted. So Michelle, would you pray for us today as we replant? I would love that. Oh, Father God, I just thank you for Jeremiah and Ezekiel. Um, I thank you for these two men and how you use them to uh, warn and teach the Israelites. And uh, Father, I, I just I just pray that as we read through um, through these passages today, this week, this month, that we do not grow weary and tired, but that you encourage our hearts as we learn more about you and your love, your love for your people. And I thank you that, Father, if we've placed our trust in you, if we've traced placed our faith in you, that we are one of your people. And I thank you that, that when we are your people, that you wholeheartedly give us blessings beyond imagination and you wholeheartedly re wholeheartedly forgive us of our sins. And, um, and Lord, I just, I just pray that there are people who are our friends who are listening today, who have been replanted and are probably, it hurts. It hurts to be replanted. Mm -hmm. And so, Father, would you just scoop them up and give them what they need, extra nutrients? Would you strengthen them? Would you strengthen them to go on and serve you? Father, would you strengthen all of us to serve you today right where we are? Because we all in some way have been replanted. Father, we thank you. We thank you for who you are. We thank you that you have a strong arm that embraces Mm -hmm. us and holds us so tight. And we thank you for your love and your wholehearted love for each one of us. Lord God, in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we are sending you off with some daily encouragement to get into the word and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Again, if you don't have the one-year chronological Bible that we are using, we have links to that Bible in our show notes. You can even find it in the Kindle format. Also in the show notes is a monthly and yearly schedule of the Bible reading plan that we are following. So tomorrow we are reading Ezekiel 26, verses 15 through 21, Ezekiel 27, Ezekiel 28, verses 1 through 26, 2 Kings 25, 3 through 7, Jeremiah 52, verses 6 through 11, Jeremiah 39, verses 2 through 10. And I want to take a second here to thank the team at Life Audio. You would not be listening to Daily Bible Podcasts without their partnership. Go to lifeaudio.com and find other great Christian podcasts that are going to encourage you today. That's lifeaudio.com. And we will see you here tomorrow. Bye-bye.